All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're gonna to be talking about the displays that you use to look at your medical images. We're gonna be going through CRTs, LCDs, and OLED displays. Coming up here at How Radiology Works. Here we have the rough timeline of the usage of these types of displays for general purpose use as well as for medical imaging. We have CRTs, which got popular in the 80s through the 2000s, then LCDs, which got popular for usage in the 2000s up to present day, and then OLED displays got popular from 2010s up till present day. And we're gonna be talking about where we are today and where we see the future for these types of displays. So stick around all the way to the end. First off is the cathode ray tube. This one was the bread and butter of TV technology and of monitors for some time. You can see that this is a deep tube and it's definitely not a flat panel, right? This cathode ray tube is the one that I think you're gonna be most familiar as far as how it actually works because it's a lot like an x-ray tube actually. Remember, just like in an x-ray tube, the electrons come from the cathode. There's then a grid using electric fields. The electrons aren't just all over in a huge space cloud. We'd like them to be in a relatively narrow region such that then they can get pulled through. So we have a grid here at the beginning, just like we do on an x-ray tube. Then we have anode plates here, some anode plates here, and some anode plates here, such that we keep the potential difference so that we drive those electrons, and we wanna drive those electrons towards a phosphor screen, such that when the electrons hit, then light will come out. That's how we actually can generate light on our CRT tubes, by actually having the electrons hit the phosphor screen. We'd like to do so in a nice controlled manner. We actually steer this electron beam on that screen. We've shown just a 2D cutout of this, but in reality, we're actually steering that electron beam all throughout that screen. And to do so, we actually use magnets, right? There's one set of magnets here to keep the electron beam nice and tight, and another set here to actually do the steering or to point the electrons at the right spot to hit that screen. That's why we call this a scanning electron beam. Then if we wanna make that a color screen, we can think about using three different screens, one for red, one for green, and one for blue. So just in general, you can make any color by adding up the red, green, and blue. And so we think about having what we call sub pixels that'll have a red, green, and blue that add up to give you whatever color you want. We do that by actually driving the electrons to hit relatively close by one another in what we call sub. We're gonna have actually a piece of metal right by that screen. There's gonna be little holes cut in that piece of metal such that the electrons will go just on the red, the green, or the blue. That's how we get the sub pixels. We've expanded it here more than it is in reality. But if you remember these CRT tubes, sometimes the actual positioning of where those electrons were firing would get off a little bit, and you would get your red, green, and blue signals to be a little bit off from one another so they weren't adding up quite right. That's one of the disadvantages of the CRT tube. If you played around as a kid, like I did, if you put a magnet up by one of these screens, you could see that you could destroy the picture at one given time. Luckily, I didn't do too much permanent damage. Just in general, if you bring a magnetic field right by here, you can see why that would really disrupt your ability to make an image because the electrons would then get pulled based on this extra magnet that you're adding. This is just a picture of a zoom in to get the idea of these sub pixels where we have red, green, and blue sub pixels all right next to one another. Your eye can't visualize these when they're so small in reality, but if you zoom it in and you can get a sense of what the red, green, and blue sub pixels were like on your CRT, the bulkiness of this was one of the chief disadvantages, and this drove in the desire to have a flat panel. Next up was the LCD monitor, and sometimes the newer ones they call LEDs because it has a different backlight. We're gonna talk about how we use a backlight in these types of monitors. When the backlight became an LED monitor, 
Sometimes the manufacturers would call these displays. In general, it's still based on this liquid crystal technology. Liquid crystals were actually discovered when boiling carrots years ago. The actual carrots would separate into two different types of crystals depending on the boiling temp. Just goes to show you that both eating and using carrots is good for your body. The first thing we need to talk about to understand the LCD displays is what we call the polarization of light. So we can think of light as moving as both a particle and a wave. Especially in this visible light range, we often are using the wave properties of light. When light is coming in, you can think about it oscillating side to side. It also could be moving up and down. This is the electric field we're plotting here. It can be kind of in any one of these orientations as it's propagating, if we use what we call a linear polarizer, that is actually going to block the waves which are oscillating side to side. If it's not oscillating up and down here, it's not going to make it through a linear polarizer. In our liquid crystal displays, we use two polarization filters. So first we'll be bringing light in. That light is actually going to get polarized linearly in one direction. We then have a second polarization filter which is blocking the perpendicular light, none of that light would end up making it through. If you have a vertical polarizer and a horizontal polarizer, you're going to block basically all of that light. The idea here is to put something in between those two that can change the polarization of the light while it's in between there. And that's a liquid crystal. If we have a liquid crystal and we apply a bias to that liquid crystal, it changes the orientation of the crystals and it can cause that light to rotate in its polarization. The idea is if we have a backlight on from the back then we turn the bias on for this liquid crystal is going to rotate the polarization so that the polarization is going to be up and down here. And as it passes through the liquid crystal, the polarization gets rotated so that it's horizontal. So light will pass through because it starts vertical and that rotates to horizontal. If you have the bias or voltage off, that's gonna lead to what we call a bright pixel because the light is going to get through. If we turn the bias or voltage on, what's gonna happen is the crystals are going to align differently within that liquid crystal. If the backlight is coming in, that light is gonna be polarized up and down, and we're not gonna actually change the polarization so that it's aligned horizontal. Now, the light will not get through. So this is going to be a dark pixel. In this manner, by just controlling small electronic circuits, we can change the properties of this liquid crystal, which then change the properties of light getting through, which will make the picture on your display. We can do this with subpixels that have different colors, red, green, and blue. Subpixel can be controlled separately. In this case, the light is not red, green, and blue yet, but there's a red, green, and blue filter. So it's just showing that as the light comes through, these ones are going to be showing up red, these ones are going to be showing up green, and these ones are going to be showing up blue. The same technology, again, with subpixels that are red, green, and blue so that we can see the different colors. The advantages of LCDs is they've been around for a while. They're relatively stable now. They're relatively less expensive in comparison with the newer displays. The disadvantages are that you have that full backlight array that's on all the time especially if you just want to show a image which is primarily black. You're still having to spend the power to have the backlight on. You also don't have the best contrast between your blacks and your whites because there's not a pure black. We're using these different polarizations to block the light, but it's not going to block 100% of the light, so you don't get a pure black on these LCD displays. It does take a little bit of time to change these responses, so it's not the fastest possible technology as far as the actual updating of the screen. OLEDs are the newer kit on the block here for organic light emitting diodes. The idea here is to make separate, controllable, individual light emitting diodes that are gonna be used. So we could control the light that's coming from each of these light emitting diodes and we won't need a backlight anymore. On LCDs, you had the backlight that was actually providing light and the LCD 
was actually just a filter, essentially. You had 100% light coming in and LCD would filter the light getting through. In this case, the organic light emitting diodes are going to be programmable so that we'll be able to turn them on or off and we'll be able to make our picture. And that way we can free ourselves of the need for a backlight, make the display thinner. Within each of those organic light emitting diodes, we have what we call a cathode and an anode. Same type of terminology where we're going to plug a battery in. Once we plug the battery in and turn on the given organic light emitting diode, what we see is that electrons are coming at the cathode and holes are being produced at the anode. And those are propagating to these two layers of the organic light emitting diode. There's what's called a conduction layer and an emissive layer. When the holes and the electrons combine, it's what's called a recombination and light is emitted. Then light is emitted when the electrons and holes combine. There's a couple ways that we can do this. You could design a light emitting diode as far as the sub pixels. We again want a red, green, and a blue sub pixels. We can design and print separately red, green, and blue alternating sub pixels such when the electron and holes combine, we'll get either red, green, or blue light. This is one method to do the printing separately. Less expensive means is actually to generate white light by the organic light emitting diode and to have filters going over each of the red, green, and blue subpixels, such as a red, green, and blue as an output. And you can make the combination again of the red, green, and blue to make any color you want for your subpixels. The advantages of OLEDs is that they're fast and that they're a thin display. They do not require a backlight and you can get pure black. So you can get a higher contrast with respect to the background. This is especially important in radiological imaging. The disadvantages of the OLEDs are that they can have varied aging of the different color elements. So those different red, green, and blue elements actually can change properties over time. And you can have burn-in of the differences between your images. This is really problematic for medical imaging. And you can also have luminance degradation over time. So the brightness of the display can change more quickly than the LCD displays. For these reasons, the organic light emitting diodes haven't yet gained full popularity for medical imaging. But over time, we believe that organic light emitting diodes, if these areas can be solved, will start to displace LCD displays, also sometimes called LED displays, for the purpose of medical imaging. There will be continued innovation into newer technologies as well, just like these technologies have displaced the cathode ray tube in another 20, 30 years, these light emitting diodes probably will dis be displaced by another technology. Now that you know all about the monitors that are used to actually view the images, see our video on photoelectric and Compton interactions to understand the basic interactions that control the X-ray contrast in your medical images.